Hi guys, welcome to Raymaf Studio. Um, today I have a pleasure to chat with my good buddy John Johansson, aka Crow Industries, who very recently, because last Saturday, um, you know, uh, published a game, uh, which is which is very cool. I know John for a few years now, and he was always into. Uh, you know, uh, rule writing and, uh, you know, running uh, different campaigns. And I actually get to get to know him through a Necromanda campaign. I was looking for people to play Necromanda uh, with. And uh, John was uh, the leader of the group and uh, he ran the campaign over there. And, you know, he was doing some cool stuff. Uh, but now the time has come to make his own game. And this is what we're going to talk about today. So, John, hi. Uh, uh, uh. I wrote a game, Bart. Yes, I'm very excited. I wrote a game. Yes, you did. You did. <laughs> but there, uh, there, before you wrote it, like there was, there was a path you had to go through to get there. Like I remember, you was like we were playing Ashwaits, Necromanda Ashwaits, before it was a thing. Yeah. So tell us about it. So, uh, what, 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 what drives you to, you know, create rules for various games, and uh, you know, what, what is it about war gaming that wants you to be more active uh, than a player? I've always just loved it. It always felt um, like an old white dwarf magazines. You'd have like the campaigns and things, and the little, the little scenarios that they'd write, and it was really nice to see the editorial from all the guys that were producing this stuff, and. There was always a, I want to do that. I want to kind of capture a story or I want to put your players in a certain situation and see how they react. And a lot of people get it from kind of D and D stuff, but I like putting it into a tabletop scenario where it's not just my army versus yours and we'll smash dice against each other until one of us dies. You know, you can get more of a narrative out of it. And I love that side of things. And you've done uh, quite, a, quite a quite a lot of exciting stuff uh, with our Necromanda campaigns, like you know. Uh, yeah, you you joined in at like the height of it. We were on a um, a whole section of the um, hive was under this massive war, and you turned out went, "Hey, I'd like to play some Necromanda." And yeah, we dropped you in the deep end. Um, Luckily, you were just as crazy as the rest of us. So you picked it up pretty quick. <laughs> well, I remember the first game uh, versus Ian, and I just didn't know what I'm doing. Like, you know, I was doing crazy stuff, but I made up a uh, fun story uh, at the end uh, uh, of it. So that was that. That was what it was, like creating. Like, I was just like immersed suddenly, you know, in the yeah. underhive and stuff. But then then came... Uh, um, um, the ash wastes and you had to write some rules for it so uh how did you go about it what what did you have in mind so what what happened there john so i was off the back of it being narrative kind of preempting what people are going to do um in a sense of if there's a rule that can be broken someone will probably break it and i can't stand that um again it's supposed to be a setting where you have fun with the people you play in the game with. So putting things in place that are auto picks or things that are overpowered just kind of suck the fun out of it for me. So that's kind of the core of trying to write these things alongside telling that story. Um, so with the Ash Waste, the fun thing about that was everything sucked. You know, you, you needed the setting to like really suck for everyone. So the gear you got hold of was rubbish. The new hirings you could get like barely had all their own original teeth. Um, like if you died out in the waste, that was it. There was there was no medical attention. Um, it needed to, like I said, it needed to feel like it sucked. So that's what I tried to get across narratively with that one. And I think that was a lot of fun. And then a couple of years later, Games Workshop copied me. So I must have been doing <laughs> some. I, they seem always copy you, John. <laughs> it's come up a few times. It's probably more that I've thrown enough darts that uh, I've hit a couple of good targets. Um, but yeah. So, okay, like, um, so you, you've been, you know, obviously running uh, campaigns and writing rules for them and making stuff fun. So where did the idea come uh, came from to actually make your own game? So I, I loved the early 2000s. It was early 2000s, so probably a bit later. Um, it was Mongoose Publications released a game called Starship Troopers, and it was 28 mil. And I must have been halfway through uni and I threw so much money at this game. 
Um, arachnid warriors were about this big, and it looked so cool on a table, but it was too big. Um, there wasn't enough of the the big swooping aircraft and the big engagements. Everything just felt very small and skirmishy, and I didn't feel that did the setting much justice. Don't get me wrong, I loved the game, um, but it didn't do what I wanted the setting to do. So fast forward to last summer, um, Awake's Emporium uh, is a guy that does digital models online, and he's got some really cool six mil stuff. Uh, he was doing a lot of Lord of the Rings things at the time. And as a palate cleanser, he decided to do some Starship Troopers models. And he did warrior bugs, he did warrior swarms, and he did this huge range of light infantry. And they're so good. But then he posted them all up online and I saw them. And that was kind of what got the ball rolling. So I did a big share on my story, said, oh my God, these are amazing. Uh, I'd love for there to be a full game system of this. I'm half tempted to make some digital models to go with it. And then he messaged me back going, go on then. <laughs> so, <laughs> so I kind of did. And I did a couple of practice models. And then I had a rough idea for what I kind of wanted a game to be. And the, the logic from the beginning has been, I'd write a game system. And if I enjoy it, perfect. If anyone else enjoys it, bonus. Um, so I've done some play testing. We've had sort of a local group involved. Um, Big shout out to Will for being the absolute best proofreader for putting up with not only my bad typos, but understanding what I'm trying to say when it's kind of you get to the keyboard and just mash up buttons because you're excited and trying to say something. Um, so for him to translate that word salad has been incredible. <laughs> um, but yeah, sort of making it the experience you want it to be. You know, we've all got our favorite thing about Starship Troopers or any setting, in fact, or any franchise we're invested in. But I needed it to feel like you were playing the 90s movie, if that was your favorite part of it, or something from the Roughnecks Chronicle series. So it had to have all those characters and all those units available to you. And the scenarios needed to feel like the setting, which is, yes, hordes of giant arachnids are awful but high command are also jerks and keep making you do dumb things and send you off on ridiculous missions you go capture a hill and then they tell you they don't want that hill so you've got to go do something else um so oh and fleet don't care fleet don't care they get paid more than you they've got a better seat of the battlefield and a better view so they, they don't care so they might come and help you so i needed to capture all these things in a rule set and i managed to get it down to like 90 pages so i think that wasn't too bad well done, well done. But th that was uh, actually a luck, uh, you could say. You know, you 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 kind of uh, saw something, and then it was just like uh, impulse. Uh, you know, you. That's incredible, man. Uh, it's usually off the back of sort of friends, or especially our local gaming club. Uh, like again, big shout out to the the Vietaf, sort of our group. Someone will go. Wouldn't it be cool if? And one of us will go and run a campaign off the back of that or go and write something or write a scenario. And yeah, within two weeks, you'll play in that. Wouldn't it be cool if moment? So yeah, I feel like this is one of those that escalated and then took six months of my life uh, and hopefully entertained a lot of other people in the process because I'm mega entertained. I played the game. Uh, I played the game once uh, when we uh, recorded um, a little battle report that's going to be shown um, here later on. Uh, in a week or so, but um, tell us, uh, you kind of said you, you wanted six mil because you wanted to have an epic scale, but you also jumped from, oh, uh, you know, there were models and then we started play testing, but you <laughs> sat down and what, you just, you just dropped like general ideas um, and then worked through. So you, when you was telling, uh, telling, uh, talking about this game, you mentioned few things. Would it be like that? Just uh, pointers and then, okay, how do I break it down rule-wise and uh, and so on? Um, process, uh, John. It, it, no, it was the way I described it. It was an absolute blur. Uh, I, I said, I'm going to do this. <laughs> and then I woke up one morning and there was a rule set. No, you're totally right. Sounds, it was sounds like you. <laughs> the, the, the notes section on my phone has been an absolute saver because every time you have one of those moments or you're talking to someone else that loves the franchise, they'll be like, Oh my god, I love this bit in the film when. Right, that needs to go in there. Or a certain unit, or someone does something, or it needs to have all those those little touchstones from the franchise in there. 
And I think there was a lot of that. So for the first two months, it was mostly digital modeling assets because that was something that already existed. That was just making things into STL files that could then be 3D printed. Uh, whereas the rules at that point were exactly like you said, a load of notes. It was just little pointers that I'd put on my phone and then I could come back to and sort of flesh them out. And some of them became totally different other concepts, but others kind of just evolved into uh, like a special rule for a character or a certain unit can do something. And yeah, it needs to have that feel. Mm. Um, there's one or two I haven't quite captured yet. Uh, Miles specifically asked for a rule where he could rodeo a tanker bug like Rico does in the movie. It's got to go in there somewhere. I'm going to find it, but I've got a load of expansions planned on the way. So maybe, maybe we'll put something in there. But yeah, players need that. <laughs> That's hilarious. So um, you've been uh, playtesting it for a while, I assume. And um, how how did that go? Was that uh, very useful? Did you use models? How 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 your play uh, playtesting looked like for the game? Uh, the playtesting started not looking nearly as nice as all the photos I've put up. Uh, it was loads of little MDF discs and offcuts of bases and things with initials written on them. And God, those first games looked awful. Um, but yeah, oh my God, an absolute treat with miniatures now. It's exactly like I'd imagined it the whole time. Yeah, uh, but yeah, the, the play tests, and I'll go into kind of the mechanics of the game a little later, but it needed to, it needed to hurt in a way that the <laughs> game needed to hurt you so we play scenarios and if they didn't feel challenging enough we dial it up and we tweak things and make it because the whole concept is cooperative so if you and i are playing a game and you stop pulling punches I'm, oh okay come on then so i'll start playing rough as well the game can't do that so we just had to have it dialed up to full difficulty the whole time to compensate um so there was one playtesting session I remember very vividly, and we absolutely aced it. So myself and Will played this game. Every mission card that came up, we just completed. Everything went perfectly. Um, and Will was going to leave. He was already like, oh, cool, I'm, I'm done for the evening. We're good. So, Can we go again? Because I'm not satisfied in the, the self-harming respect here. Like, I don't feel like the game is violated me enough. <laughs> Um, so we played the exact same scenario again, and it, it kicked all hell out of us. Um, so yeah, that that was another point of the randomness of the game. You you don't know how it's going to go. You know, the change of a couple of dice rolls or scenarios coming out in different orders. Yeah. So that second one um, was was way rougher, honestly. First, so it made up for it. So John, you mentioned that this is um, a cooperative games. Could you just uh, introduce the game to us a little bit more? I should probably start with that at the beginning, but I think you mentioned that uh, right now, and I think it's a good uh, good moment as well to just what's so different about this game and why is it special? Yeah, absolutely. So the concept from the start was always you play cooperatively. The the arachnids themselves are meant to be these really alien aliens um they're not supposed to be knowable their actions aren't really comprehensible and i like the idea that the game would do those activations for you i've played some really cool games in the past mostly board games where it's generated on like an ai for what the baddies do so i wanted that kind of feel so it felt like if you or i are playing we're up against it so we have to um, negotiate the best course of action and we have to, oh, maybe your squad needs to stay there and die so mine can go and get the mission done. Um, compromise. Um, but that's done as a discussion between you and your allies. So that was always the core element of it, is it being cooperative. Um, in fact, Wills described it as a, was it a very violent board game. Um <laughs> Uh, so the core mechanics of it, you can play the game between one and four players as the mobile infantry. And again, because it's controlled by an AI, you can play this game by yourself um, and it will it will work. You will have less people to negotiate with, but obviously you've still got to come up with ways around preventing the arachnids moving into a position or you've got to go take an objective or something needs to be done on these mission cards. Uh, you can play it with a player playing as the arachnids. 
It still uses the AI system, but they have a bit of control over certain elements of it. We call this brain bug mode, and it's it dials the difficulty up yet again. Um, and it's also just for that friend that likes to play as the DM and likes to really challenge their friends. So otherwise, it's totally cooperative. So you can play with up to five players. Um, and the missions are generated throughout the game. So another thing I've not got bored of with other game systems, but is kind of done to death is we play a scenario. We both have the same scenario. We're both trying to get the same five bits of cardboard on the table and have the most models around them at the end. So the way this game works is you'll have five decks of what are called op cards. Um, and each of these have a, a set mission or something you and your team have to do. Once one is completed, you flip it over and there'll be another one underneath. And it might be something new to do, or it might be the end of that deck. And it's totally random how long the game lasts, what you'll be asked to do, if you've messaged the same thing more than once. Um, yeah, so there's a lot of compromise and change each time to hopefully make your games totally different. You shouldn't kind of make a force, rock up week in, week out, and go, what are this now? Do you have uh, 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 how many cards you've got, mission cards? Is that um, a huge variety? What's the plans for it? Uh... So there's currently uh, eight different, they're called points of interest, which are objectives, and they're different types of objectives. So you'll never have a generic objective in this game. There's They range from like a, an arachnid hive to a civilian facility to a downed dropship. Each of those points of interest will have three mission cards and one end of op card. And those are the things that end you having to do a deck. Um, and they will all be different as well. So you'll put five points of interest on a table. Each of those will have three missions that go into the deck. They all get shuffled together and they make five separate little decks. And that determines what you end up doing. Um, there is a situation that may come up. It hasn't been playtesting, but all the first five cards are the end of ops and you kind of shrug and go, cool, we won. So you just reshuffle and go again. Um, or you could have what's way more likely to happen in the game, because like I said, it will punish you. And as we all know, as war gamers, late luck is out to get you. Um, the end of ops will all be at the bottom of the decks. Um, so you'll have to play everything. <laughs> That's mad. Uh, well, when we played that game, it looked absolutely beautiful. Um, and uh, I, I, a lot of your... Uh, um, attention like you said was to build models for it you have such a variety of stuff available there could you just tell us uh you explained that you wanted uh, elements of film and series and whatnot but could you could you could could you tell us a little bit about uh your choices or about how the units are built uh and what kind of stuff right now today uh people could uh, use to play the game yeah, absolutely. So the three squad types you can take for mobile infantry at the minute are the light infantry, which is just that from your 90s movie. Um, so if that's your, and as most people is, that's how they know Starship Troopers, you can play all light infantry if you want. Um, there's the power armored infantry, which are from the early 2000s Roughneck show. And then you've got the advanced power armor, which is from the 2012 Starship Troopers CG film. Uh, but this is also a great segue to put in here that not all the digital modeling is me. So like I said, the light infantry and the warrior bugs were all from Wake's Emporium and they are lovely. And uh, five of the aircraft in the game, so the Skyhook, the Viking, the Firecrest, the Firefox, and the Thunderbolt Bomber were all done by Andy over at Andy's Mechs. And he has done such a nice job. Um, that was a great conversation where I said I was doing this game and it was less of a would you like me to make these models and more can I um, and I'm so glad he did because they are so nice yeah, so we, yeah absolutely uh, ready for his chair yeah we're going to post the link um, uh, to maybe files or um, you know whatever needs to be posted there uh, so people can see but you've been working on stuff as well and you've been painting a lot and um you know what what did you bring uh in terms of sculpting to the game uh oh god it feels like so long ago because it's the start of the project um but the all the power armor all the advanced power armor uh the two drop ships for both of those units 
Um, I learned how to sculpt organics for digital modeling. That was fun. Um, yeah, there, there was a lot of new experiences. I'd never done infantry before. Luckily, these guys are all in power armor, so that was that was nice and easy. But no, I've, I've learned loads from doing this project. So yeah, got up, what comes next? <laughs> There's also loads planned for the future as well to add to this, because people just keep going, oh, I love this. Are you also going to do blank? Uh, yeah, I welcome more in the comments below. Brilliant. Uh, listen, so you had uh, you uh, um, kind of the game came out on Saturday, right? Tell us a little bit about the experience uh, uh, you had and how. Yeah, you 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 said it yourself. Uh, you know, speak a little bit about the future then. Uh, you know what I mean? Because um, I think it was quite successful, was it? Well, I'm not. I'm not a games company. I'm. I'm just a guy that writes cool stuff to entertain himself and his friends, usually himself, uh, to see how his friends will bumble over scenarios that he's made, um, like some kind of terrible puppet master. But I put a, a provisional date on. I'm going to release it on this day, and I I sort of played into the hype train and sort of did a load of releases beforehand, which was a lot of fun because again the the sort of community bouncing back from that. But at no point did I think people would like genuinely be excited for it. Uh, one person was counting down the days. Um, and then the reception I got on Saturday was, yeah, so good. So good. Um, and I can't wait for people to actually play it. So the, the first expansion coming out is going to be uh, in the next week or so, which is it's only a one page PDF, uh, but it's how to play a demo version of the game. So. It is potentially a lot to sort of build and paint for a standard game. So it's kind of a training scenario, which kind of drops you in with half the amount of miniatures and just lets you play with mechanics a bit. But I didn't want to put it in the core book because it just feels like a like an added extra for how to play. So now that people have kind of seen it, gotten excited, OK, here's, here's a way to play with with less toys. So you don't have to you don't have to use MDF discs like I had to. Oh, yeah, cool. Um, yeah, I played the game on uh, last week, I think, uh, you know, with you a little bit. And so there was some elements of it that really make me like, you know, uh, excited about it. Like there was this one moment uh, when we were discussing, actually, like I was obviously filming that. And then we stopped filming for a second and just had that conversation. And I really <laughs> wanted to go like with that squad that haven't done anything to my right uh, bottom corner of the of, of, of the of the board. And I said, oh, how about we go on, you know, s split uh, the unit and just like try to. And he was like, mm, yes, we could do that. I said, this is cinematic, man. We have to do it. We have to do it. And he was like, how about we do? No, we have to do that. We have to do it. So we did it. And it worked. And I was like, yes, man, this is it. This is it. This is it. That, that's, that's what I need in my life. But it's those discussions in the game as well. So yeah. depending who you're playing the game with, you might have someone that's a massive personality that's like, no, no, we're doing this. We we are, this is the scenario. And everyone, okay. <laughs> but that, that's up to you and your gaming group. And I think there's, it gives you that dynamic that you'd have from playing a board game while you're doing a tabletop board game. So yeah. for me, it, it ticks those boxes. It gives you that kind of community and I'm trying to think what I'm comparing it to. It's some kind of cooperative game. If anyone's ever played the Battlestar Galactica board game where you are working together or um, so if there's a Dead of Winter, I think that's a really good one. Yeah, so that, was that collaborative feeling. You're playing against the game and Liam, the play tested it with us, he, he absolutely coined the term perfectly after we'd finished uh, the first game he played. He said, it's really great. I felt like it's playing a war game, but it didn't have the the bad feels at the end you know when your buddy turns up and just totally annihilates you and you're like yeah cheers great nice thanks game yeah yeah good 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 there's none of that because you all win or lose the game either annihilates you all or you're all high-fiving at the end and sharing war stories but i think exactly like you said you do have to make those decisions between okay we really need to go over there and score those points but there'll be someone at the table going but if my unit activate, we can do this thing that will be really cool. And that'll be up to you to decide which you do, which I think is fun in itself. 
And then if it works, brilliant. If it doesn't, mm, maybe don't trust that guy next time. <laughs> <laughs> hey, you said no bad feelings after the end of the game. Come on, man. <laughs> None that the game has brought. This is anything people have brought to the table. But also, there's there's that guy in your gaming group that always wins. You're like, oh, I don't want to play him this week. In this game, no, no, you want him to play. You want to come, come over here. We could do some help. We're going to absolutely annihilate. Come and join in. <laughs> oh, brilliant. John, I uh, I look forward to playing that game uh, again pretty soon uh, because that one time uh, I had loads of fun, but I know I'm going to have even more if I don't have camera with me. Yeah, camera just down. Con just, just, just concentrate on the game. Uh, before it's kind of how I feel at the moment is um, <laughs> I don't have to play the game with my notes on my phone now or scribbling on the rule book. I can just play it now, which is amazing. Um, I mentally sort of making notes for expansions but beyond that i'm actually able to enjoy the game yeah before 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 we finish uh, john i really want to hear about the expansion and if there are ideas you could actually share with us today or or not i know that yeah, yeah. this came out but uh, you know uh, the future is near an exclusive would you, um, would you like would you like to know more <laughs> oh, i can't <laughs> believe i haven't used that one yet um so yeah the <laughs> After the tutorial sort of training mission, um, I want to put out a, a Klandathu mission pack, which will allow you to play through the original 90s movie. Um, and you can have character units. So Rico um, and Flores will be in there. And they'll have special rules. And it just adds a bit more flavor. Um, again, people have come to this in some cases purely off the back of the movie. So letting them play through that experience. So there'll be totally different scenarios for how to work through that including a boot camp scenario where it's MI versus MI. Um, and then, yeah, after that, there's a load of stuff planned based on the Roughneck series because there were some really cool campaigns in that. Um, a lot of people have asked for the skinnies from that, and they are totally coming. That's another chance to flex my now able to sculpt organics muscles. But, uh, yeah. Um, and any other ideas? Um, I keep getting said, oh, you're going to make A, like I said. So... <laughs> <laughs> Add it to the list. If if I'm honest with you, your game actually made me to rewatch the movie. I watched it like you know when it came out, and and it was brilliant. And you know I remember chatting with my mates about you know ah, these aliens and stuff. But I actually rewatched it uh, very recently, and man, it's still it still holds the ground. Man, it's a very good movie. It's like yeah. cheesy and kind of plastic, yeah. but but it's fantastic. But your inner twelve year old is going yes. <laughs> Hundred percent, hundred percent. Yeah, I really enjoy that. John, thank you very much for that. Like, um, you know, uh, everybody else, uh, check out uh, John's game. As I said, I played it uh, once and I really enjoyed it. All the links are in description below, so you can uh, check it out. And um, yeah, we will be posting the battle reports soon as well. Uh, and uh, yeah, that was lots of fun. That action that I actually mentioned will be there. We filmed it. <laughs> so thank you, John, man. Thank you. Pleasure. Thank you very much for having me.